Welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. My name is Lisa Beyer, and I will be your host. Today's guest is Nava Berg. She is an expert in social VR. You may ask, what is social VR? Social VR is the combination of social media marketing and virtual reality. But Nava goes way beyond that. In this episode, we talk about how we first met, We worked together at the buyer group right when social media and SEO and public relations were joining forces. And then we fast forward to today when Nava is on the front lines when it comes to augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and artificial intelligence. So in this episode, Nava and I go deep and we also are very actionable in what she shares on how you can apply augmented reality and virtual reality to your marketing and public relations strategy. So get ready to take lots of notes. Nava is going to share tons of sources with you. And if you don't want to take notes, no worries. We're going to share all those sources in the show notes. Enjoy and namaste. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. And I am excited to have Nava Berg as my guest. Hey, Nava. Hey, Lisa. Thanks for having me. So Nava and I go way back, like how many years? Like way, way back. Over a decade. (laughs) Yes, over a decade. It's been 12 years. Yes. And we work together on so many different projects and clients with the buyer group and really just have watched the social media revolution take place in front of us. And also now the virtual reality, augmented reality emerging technologies revolution is now happening and you have been like embracing it full force. Yeah. I I mean, when I I just remember trying it for the first time, I was like, okay, this is it. It's almost like when social media, when we were doing social media and nobody was doing it and we would try to get clients to do social media, I mean, to get a Facebook page, like this was so, I mean, it was so long ago, but now it's like everybody's an expert, but it's, it's, it's unbelievable how far it's come. And then watching social, like virtual reality and how that's going to be. I mean, I'm sure I'll just be in the beginnings of it. We'll be in the beginnings of it and just wonder how clients are going to finally like press send and implement and not wait until the last minute when everybody else is already there. So how would you, so we're, today we're going to talk about virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and mixed reality, but like specifically like how you can like integrate it into marketing, but how would you describe social VR for those of us that maybe aren't as expert as you are, or maybe hearing that term for the first time? So what is social VR? (sighs) Well, I mean, one word is presence, like the social VR, it is like, you think of your 2D newsfeed, it's almost like sitting next to that person in your newsfeed. You feel the presence. Yeah. That's so awesome. So it's combining social media and one of these technologies like virtual reality or augmented reality or mixed reality. Yeah, it's really just, it's being interactive and engaged in a, in a 3D form, in an immersive, like you're immersed inside of this social, socializing versus just using your screen to see things. I mean, you've written about it before so many times. I mean, you started talking about digital detox before I even knew what that meant and understood it. And I, you know, all those things that you wrote about, like the screen and how people are addicted and all that. Well, this sort of takes you away from that because it puts you inside. Someone said that the other day, it puts you inside of the experience versus watching it from afar. That's a great way to describe it for sure. So what would you say is the, um, the state of all of this social VR and, you know, where are we right now with, with, having it actually be part of the social media marketing or marketing strategy? It's a great question. You know, if you would have asked me that three months ago, I would have said, I mean, we might be waiting for another five to 10 years. Um, But because of everything that's happened with quarantine, PS, wear your masks, um, it has sped up everything. I mean, the Oculus Quest headset was sold out, which is, um, but, just as I know, Oculus Quest is a VR headset that's standalone. You don't need a PC or any plugs. It's what we call in the industry plug and play. And um, it literally sold out and it was sold out throughout the whole entire quarantine. People were buying it and, and trying to 
get away from their house, I guess you could say, but not leave. And in the state that we're in right now, there's more people that are joining, even the people that were in VR before didn't really understand the social VR aspect of it. They were more on um, the training, the education. They didn't really go to the socializing side of it. And I'm watching more and more people every day learn about it, talk about it, experience it. Actually, not even just talk about it. Like I said, experience it, go into it and try it out. And with the headset that's growing, you know, that puts everybody in a better place. And some of these social VR experiences can be experienced through a PC or your phone. Like for example, there's apps called Rec Room. Um, you can use it through your iPhone or your, I think even your iPad and your PC. How so do you spell that? It's Rec Room, R-E-C-R-O-O-M. Oh, Rec Room, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, my friend Paige, she has this museum in there where she's been doing art residence programs for um, for kids. And then there's Alt Space, which you know about, you did yoga in there. And I have a show, I had a show, The Hive, that, that was created by Vivian that I took over for a season. And in there, you know, they just changed their avatars. They're updating everything. There's new people coming in every day and people can experience it through their PC. For example, one of um, my friends that had a baby um, expo business, she didn't know what to do because the expo business was over in all the locations. So I told her to try out Altspace. She, you know, she tried my headset. I showed her Altspace and she created her own um, through direction. Yeah, a virtual conference. baby expo. So people that never tried VR before are trying it. It's That's so cool. It is so cool. I mean, there's so many opportunities. And it's so useful. It's cool, but it's useful. It's not just like this shiny object anymore. It's definitely becoming more... Um, you know, making more sense to be integrated in everyday business. I remember Nava, I know your I know this story and you've written about it. You write a lot on medium on the topic, but can you share your first aha experience moment? Like when you, you were reading something um, and it really got you into where this could possibly be. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. My friend was at, um, in from out of town in Ohio and she's like, let's go get a pedicure. So we, we went to the store, we worked that to the store. We went to the nail salon, got mani pedis, you know, like your typical girl. And I started reading, um, it was the cover, I think of Vogue or uh, Vanity Fair and Mark Zuckerberg was on it. So of course I was all about it. Right. We were always like, what's Mark doing right now? It's Facebook. <laughs> and it was this whole story about, VR, virtual reality, and how in our backyard, like in Florida, there was this like secretive startup that was backed by Google called Magic Leap. And it was by a Roni Abovitz, who is no longer the CEO, but I'm sure is still on the board somehow. And he was from Cleveland. So it was just a lot of like different ties. And I started reading more into it. And I'm like, VR is... is an AR, that's like the future of communication. Can you imagine? I mean, I know you and I, we have friends all over the world to be able to just hang out at any moment. I mean, just from the consumer standpoint, not even the business, it's it's definitely a want, you know? So once businesses find their place in it, the consumers will be there, you know? It, it's just, it's, it's remarkable, all of it. And then I went to F8, on Facebook's developer conference, I, you know, you, you used to always tell me knowledge, like invest in your knowledge, like educate yourself. And so I like, you know, signed up to be in this conference, paid for it, and then went and tried Facebook Spaces, which was their social VR app at the time. And I was like, uh, okay, this is the future. I can never do 2D again. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'll do it because it's still good to keep up with it because it will be tied in somehow. Um, I think through groups and obviously through connections because it's all about creating meaningful relationship. So that's where, I mean, I could talk about this forever, you know, I just yeah. love it. It's just so awesome. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that you're the host of the Hive um, VR show. So I know what that is, but for those that maybe don't really even, you know, can't really comprehend, like just Walk us through that. Like, what is that? What does it mean when you're hosting something in VR and, and, and what, how can other businesses apply it? Yeah. So, um, this, the hive was one of the first talk shows in Altspace, space and 
it just kind of close your eyes and think of like a Jimmy Fallon experience, except your world that you see in a 360 form is animated. It's created and built by artists. So I always say like the future um, artists are the future. They're creating our worlds that we're going to be like hanging out in in the future, I guess you could say. So, you know, um, there was a world builder who created my world. So, in the, in, or created the world in the 360s. He was Liam McKill. And um, we had a crew, a production crew. So there was a girl, Heather Berry. And then I was the one who would invite the host, sort of like what, what you're doing right now, invite someone as a guest. And then instead of being through a screen, we are actually standing next to each other through our avatars. So I'm doing the same thing that you're doing or that someone on YouTube is doing, except for I'm standing next to them and feeling presence, which is a really, um, amazing feeling to have when, especially when you've been locked out of, of human connection and two, um, you know, it, you meet, you can have audiences that you're meeting, literally meeting your audience. So your, your, um, your customer in 3d and feeling presence and getting to know them by, I mean, I mean, it's just like customization, personalization on steroids. So it's almost like just the analogy is Jimmy Fallon. It would be like, somebody who created the Jimmy Fallon set in real life is creating like your virtual set for you, right? The artist exactly. or the set, set designer or something. And you're basically, you know, hosting a talk show in VR. It's almost like stepping into like, for those of like, I'm not a gamer, but if you're a gamer, you can picture like gamers, like how they are, have their avatars and they're doing things. Yeah. And, like Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. So you're almost like um, stepping into some sort of a, a game type of reality, but this is more business. Um, that's so cool. It's so Twilight Zone, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So who are some of the guests that you interviewed? Oh, um, what, what type of guests? We've had a lot of the people have to have headsets. So um, you can have the person come in from the PC, but a lot of it has been like virtual reality people. So for example, Joanna Popper, she was um, the head of location-based entertainment for Hewlett Packard. Um, I had Studio Syro, who just um, were nominated for an Emmy for their um, animations, and they've done some really cool animations for um, for for music videos. They were all made in VR, which is just mind blowing. Um, and they're the first animation group that's under Quill, which is a sort of like Adobe but for virtual reality. Mm -hmm. um, all the way down to um, you know someone who was creating telemedicine, um, a telehealth company, and this was all done during quarantine. So it was so crazy. I mean, we didn't plan that, but we had people like um, you know Bobby Carlton for education in VR. Um, one day I'll get you in there um, because it's important for it's, it shouldn't just be about VR. It should be about everything because these people are everything. Right. They they do yeah. everyday things. So. It can be yeah. a hard sell sometimes. So a lot of them is, have been virtual reality. Yeah, I remember, I mean, I haven't taught my, I'm not teaching my virtual reality class right now in Altspace VR, but when I was, um, and hopefully I will be again, I would get people coming to my class from all over the world. So somebody from Africa, somebody from London, somebody from, you know, Hawaii, and I'm also, you know, from the US or South America, but it was just all of their, you know, these people put their avatars in the class. And for different reasons, they were either just wanting to experiment and just see what yoga would be like in VR, and they've never done yoga before, or they do yoga. And for whatever reason, they, you know, maybe can't go to a yoga class, and they want something more than just watching, you know, a YouTube video of somebody teaching them VR, they want to feel like they're with actually experiencing it with um, you know, other people together, like, you know, from the start to, to the end to, to meditation. So it was Absolutely. really cool being able to interact with, with the people that were joining the class before and after. I but found like out about coronavirus or coronavirus from it. You it was, did? It, yeah. Early February, this guy, it was the first show and he's like, Oh, it's been so good to just come out and hang out with everybody because I've been in my apartment for a month. I said, why? And he said, coronavirus. I'm like, what is that? And that was how I learned about it. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, but like you were saying, like it is limiting. Like you, you know, you can only come on your show or join my class, for example, my VR class, if you have a headset. But there's other ways to experience um, this technology 
without a headset and like maybe we can just segue into talking about like you know how you can just use your smartphone like snapchat is kind of like one really easy example that people might even not realize that that's an example of augmented reality yeah and you can experience alt space with a pc but it's not the same experience so yeah, yeah. totally i it's it's um Augmented reality is great because it's a digital overlay of your real world. You're not being immersed into something completely different. So you're not putting on a headset and going into another world, sort of like never ending story when they read the book, the never the kid reads the book and he goes into Fantasia. That's sort of like how I always envision VR. And then augmented reality is you're in your own space, but then there's these extra effects that make you look, let's say for a filter or, you know, they're trying to show you how to set up a Lego set, you know, there's an overlay of how to do it. So you can learn educationally, but it's just a digital ever overlayer versus jumping into another world. Yeah. And some of the examples also we were talking about last week, how Gucci just came out with the way you could actually like try in a pair of shoes with their Gucci lens. Um, and also I'm seeing just because of quarantine and people not wanting to touch things, when you go into, um, you know, like a restaurant, you know, they have the QR codes, which is like the most basic, but the QR code, you could just like, you know, get your menu right on your phone or the QR, QR code that they're using, like on the Today Show for their, their summer, you know, they have those shopping, you know, deals, deals and steals on the Today Show. So <laughs> it's like, you know, all of a sudden QR codes are making a comeback and um, augmented so reality. Funny that you're saying that. Right? No, um, literally, I just saw that in People Magazine today. QR really? codes all over the bottom right. I'm like, are QR codes making a comeback? This is crazy. Yeah, people just don't want to touch anything. But with um, going just going back to Snapchat, like um, one example that we also talked about, and we were, I think, like for sure you were, and then you helped me get them, getting the first um, Snapchat spectacles to actually see what those were like, and those were just kind of like the next generation of like the first Google glasses that. Google was making it such a covenant thing where everybody had to have the Google glasses and then that kind of died and then spectacles came out. So like, talk about that a little bit. Well, I mean, there's so many different things you can do with spectacles. I mean, now you're going to be able to do shopping. There was a guy who, um, his name is Lucas. Um, I'm going to totally kill his last name, but his name is Lucas and he created this entire movie around a day in a life, pretty much of his life. He calls it the, um, sort of the back to the future time travel because he wore his spectacles for a full year and augmented his world and also lived his world. So it was a playback of every day of his life. It was just really weird. Just that alone, just from the, from the video production side of things or just the storytelling side, it's so much more than just augmented, you know, which is, you know, you can get really creative with it because they've got, you know, Bitmoji. What well, actually, yeah, they have the Bitmoji stories. They have, um, you know, ways to tell stories through the um, spectacles. And then just the, the 360 video that mm -hmm. you get and the yeah. overlay. Yeah. So just, I mean, I think that it can be pretty intimidating thinking about like how to bring in virtual reality, augmented reality into marketing or public relations. But I mean, what are some very easy, actionable steps that somebody can take? Like, for example, one of them I know is just reading the book by Kathy Hackle and Samantha Wolf on marketing new realities. That's just like an easy education. But what are just some other easy ways that a brand could just jump into AR, VR and just try it out. And another book I would say is Convergence by Charlie Fink, um, how the world will be painted in data. But for just quick things, I mean, creating a filter, um, like for example, Spark AR, which is Instagram's Snapchat lens studio, um, Snapchat and, um, and, uh, creating a, and, and, and Spark AR, you can create a filter. If you know how to do Adobe, you could do these filters. And even if you don't know how to do Adobe that well, your, your, um, your graphic designer, I mean, I figured it out. I know how to use it. And then you can use the, like you said, the QR code in the Snapchat side of things um, and use that as your marking. Let's say you're shipping something out like a, I mean, I still believe in postcards sometimes, you know, depending on direct mail, what kind of um, marketing or PR campaign you're doing, but using that where people can, you know, take 
take their phone from this postcard that you sent, scan it, take a selfie with the filter, maybe the products in the background or a brand awareness program or a mission statement, anything you can think about, whatever your focus is in for branding and PR and marketing, you can have them create a selfie contest because what does all, all, I mean, all consumers, selfie is, I mean, it's, it's a word in the dictionary. You yeah. know, it's, it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that uh-huh. definitely is one way. Um, there's really great tools to create avatars and you can have, you can create your own space simply, very simply. I mean, as easy as just clicking a link and uploading your photo, just walking through the steps, sort of like when you first created your Facebook account the same way. Um, Spatial.io, um, you can actually go ahead and create your own avatar and then create your own world and maybe upload a video and invite other people in there and their avatars will be in there with you. I actually Um, did that last week. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I went to space, created created my avatar. Yeah, and I was like sitting next to Kelsey who works with me and I'm like, Kelsey, look at the screen. Like my avatar is like, you know, like kind of like looking real. It was crazy, very, very, very virtually real. And, um. Really? I didn't get to the part of that creating my workspace. Um, I just wanted to experiment a little bit, but we should we should try to do that and and maybe have like a social PR secrets like meet up with anybody who wants to come into our our spatial if they sign up, right? Absolutely. That'd and then so there's fun. another one um, done by Mozilla, and it's called um, Hubs um, H U B S. Mm-hmm. So that's another great one where it's very easy. So I was um, Bobby Carlton and um, Jesse Lubinsky. They um, are part of something called Ready Learner One. And they are all about VR and education. And they did this whole change maker conference. We were on a Google Hangout during the conference. They were talking about all the different things. And then they showcased, they wanted to showcase something. And they sent a link in the 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 google hangout i clicked on it if i didn't already have an account it was literally like a two second create your account connect it to your gmail um and it, pick whatever avatar you like and you can go so much further with the avatars and editing them and creating them but it's just very simple as i was sent into the same room as them and we were all hanging out with our avatars and this is a no headset required right still None. my phone and a link that's right. it and it was very easy for them to create. They just created a room and sent the link out, shared it, just like you would share a blog article. Yeah. That's sort of like worlds today. You can share a world like a blog article. That's or like crazy. these many landing pages, right? And so I think just, everybody should so. do that. Like that, if that's like one action item from this um, interview is go and at least just experiment so that for it's sure. not so foreign to you. So people that are just listening to this for the first time and they've never experienced any type of AR, VR, that I think is like the perfect first step. Well, I mean, know? think about PR, okay? So we have journalists, right? We used to, before it was even anything, like I just remember, um, not news jacking, but with the journalists, we would always reach out and like, like their stuff and share. We knew that it was like a news platform, right? That's where you can invite all of these journalists you've created relationships in and show the product in 3D that you're trying to sell. You know, can you imagine that from a PR perspective? And it doesn't take much developer work. You know, it just takes a strategy and and a doer. That's it. And I think you also have to have the believers behind you and people have to be looking at doing things a little bit different and being, being okay to go out of the box because sooner, sooner than later, this is not going to be different. This is going to be the norm. It's, it's, it's so much like social media was when social just came out and, you know, senior executives were like, you know, we don't have to have a Facebook page. We can just have our interns, you know, handle the Facebook page. Like it was minimized. Um, and, yeah. and, and this is, I don't want to say it's minimized, but it's looked at as something that is like out of their scope, out of their reach, out of their world. Like it's not going to happen anytime soon. That so doesn't have to be on their radar, but it really does. Especially like you were saying with the, the pandemic, everything's fast forward. I mean, it's just, it's really just, it really has fast forwarded everything. And I think more people are starting to understand. I mean, look at working remotely. I mean, you would have half of the companies, I mean, Siemens just went for the rest of, all employees can be virtual, can be remote. We were working remote in 2008. I remember working with 
you and we had jungle disc and we were using it like <laughs> like the cloud of dropbox and it was just literally when i look back at those times we had remember those avatars what were yes. the, what was the oh it's like we world or something we world right we were we already world. in we had our own avatars, avatars yeah in 2008 you know we knew that was the next step so it was, it's really interesting to watch how this will unfold, but with quarantine and with working remotely, people are starting to understand that there's no other choice. Business has to happen. You can't travel, so why not meet up in VR? And this headset, this Oculus Quest, this is an Oculus Quest. Notice how there's no plugs, nothing. There's this, sorry, I have my virtual background without a green screen, but, and then you have the controllers, that's it. I carry it around in this case right here. Easy. Yeah. So we'll have to, if we'll have to post pictures on this with the show notes. If, for those of you that are just listening, um, you can just go to the show notes and I'll post pictures of what Nava is holding up and we'll put links to the Oculus Quest. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, yeah. just all you need as a journalist, as a PR person, as a marketer, as, a, as anything is a 399 dollar headset think about playstation parents buy it all the time and one game is fifty dollars so if you buy a playstation with a game you're already at 399 yeah so this is not like the headset that we what was the headset the rift that we had we got the rift well the rift was the only headset that there was at that time there was no quest so we had the rift but with the rift you need a pc and as you know with the rift and the pc come a lot of extras Yes, and, and we're, not P we're not PC people. <laughs> right, we're Mac. I mean, I've become, I'm actually on a PC right now because I'm because so I, I'm always, always switching back and forth from the Mac, but I love the Mac, of course, so much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, you're forced to work on a PC. I mean, it's not control art alt v it's like command V. What are these people thinking, you know? <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's very... Um, so now you don't need a PC. You don't need a PC at all. And if now, if you're creating experiences, you can have a PC and just plug in your Oculus Quest. So it's much easier. There's not the updates that you don't need it. So, so if, if you're, you're traveling. If you're a creator, you might, you probably would need a PC, but if you're just experiencing and communicating using VR, you don't need. Yeah, and if you're a creator more on the development side. So for mm -hmm. example, I use, um, here's another tool you can use. So Google has this experience app called Tilt Brush and you can create art. And the art, when you download it, is 360 views. So it's, it's sort of like creating a 3D piece of art. You can do that with the Quest without a PC. Oh, but great. if you want more of the features, then you would have to have the PC. But for creating, you can create content with just your Quest. While we're talking about Facebook and 3D, I just want to also mention how easy it is to create 3D photos, just experimenting on Facebook on the using that 3D feature or the panorama photos on, you know, that you would upload to the mobile and that turns into a 3D experience. So it's so easy to just take that little step in experimenting with 3D. And another one is a 360. If you're one of those people that needs to have a 360 background, what you can do is you can get an Insta 361, which is not that expensive. Um, it's a camera. You connect it to your phone, very simple to use. Again, it's just setting it up, like setting any other account. You plug it into your phone and then you take the picture and it pretty much stitches everything itself. And you can even put your brand logo on it. All you do is just upload an image. So it's the Insta 361. Um, the newest one is the Insta 361 X, as we know, like it always changes. But if you're just looking for the basic 360 image background, so you don't want to create a world or anything, you just want to upload that. That is a tool you could use. So if you're um, if you're creating something for your um, product product development, you want to show how a product is made, you could do a video and upload that into your art. Yeah, so and I miss cool. Facebook Spaces so much. So um, Facebook Spaces was Facebook's first platform for, for VR, and we both experimented and hung out there. And what I loved about it and what we were doing for a while, but now they closed it, but hopefully it's coming into its next generation, Facebook Horizons. But this is just another idea of how you can integrate um, VR, AR into your strategy just using content created in VR. So we would go into... 
Facebook spaces, we would find a 360 photo, like I found one, like I was about to go to Cuba, or we found one in New York, we found one of the New York skyline, we were doing that event with Kathy Mackle, yeah, and we we took a a selfie of us, but it was our avatars with the 360, and it was like, awesome, you know, like we went live from New York, and it looked like we were in New York, and hopefully Facebook is going to come out with their do you, do you see Horizons as being similar or the next step up from Spaces? Yeah, I I think that um, well, I wrote a long time ago on my blog, I wrote about how I feel that the next phase of community is presence because I truly feel like the groups um, is what is going to connect and create more meaningful relationships. So it's an obvious next step for Facebook. And what I love about Facebook and why, I, why you know, Spaces was like the place that, first of all, I love their avatars, so. I their avatars enjoyed. were the best. Is yeah. the Facebook group still open for Spaces or no? They shut it down. They did, okay. Yeah, I mean, you could still look at, it's archives, so you could still look at it, but it's not continuing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it was great because, you know, working with, being in it so as an early adopter, you know, it was, it was great to hear and be a part of the beta process with Facebook. That was like my best experience. And that's where I, I feel like after all the conferences I went to Oculus and also F8, I just felt like the next phase really was presence because the groups and communities that are built in Facebook currently, I mean, first of all, you see it all over your newsfeed. That's going to be your first, right? And then second, it just makes the most sense because people are connected around the same niche or the same topic. So why wouldn't that be Horizon's next step? Like, I don't know for sure. It's just what I think and what I thought, you know, when it first was announced in September, 2019. Yeah. And it's supposed to be coming out um, in 2020. So it'll be exciting to see yeah. everything that happens. For sure, for sure. So you can actually sign up to be first to know about Facebook Horizons. I think just Google Facebook Horizons and there's a landing page that you can get an email and yeah. be notified when it comes out. Um, I just want to also talk quick about uh, just we, a lot of our listeners might be digital marketers or, you know, like we optimize and talk about optimizing everything. So with with um, just to an example, Google Maps. So I experimented with Google Maps live where you're, you're looking at, you know, you put in where you want to go and you just have your smartphone you know up and it's showing you using augmented reality like what's in front of you with like little messages um you know for restaurant here turn right here and you really have to make sure that all of your local seo is optimized so that it's going to be able to integrate augmented reality into all of the local platforms like yelp or google maps or google my business absolutely um Great tip here. Google is doing a lot of virtual classrooms stuff. Um, I can share it with you and then you can share it, but definitely optimizing your Google My Business page alone and just learning about the ad side. And remember, YouTube is connected. Um, But the way that I always talk about Google is like, remember Monocles? Actually, you taught me about Monocles on Yelp. And I was like, what? You're like, yeah, the Monocle. Just put it up top and you can see exactly where to go, like what you what restaurant is a good restaurant? And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Can you imagine what's coming next? And as someone who's geographically challenged when it comes to directions, (laughs) I'm so excited for the feature of someone just telling me. So I don't have to look at a screen, just I'm looking straight and showing me where to go. Right, it's the 3D version of directions, right? (laughs) It's so. Yes, but the only way that your local business is gonna be, you know, optimized and be able to be seen, you know, in with with all of these, um, it is it, it's optimized from a local level. So if you're not paying attention to your Yelp page or your Google My Business, that's where all mm-hmm. this is going to be pulled from. Uh, so it's 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 super important. The other thing I want to talk about before our time is up is virtual beans or digital beans. Like I'm kind of obsessed with that and how Deepak has created his own you know virtual bean that's going to live forever. He's 73 or 74 years old and you know, once he passes into his next, um, you know, into the state of death, then Deepak, the virtual being, is going to still be here and be able to communicate and like host meditations. It's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, Kathy Heckel wrote a great Forbes article about 
Um, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but it's pretty much what is your digital legacy going to be um, and who's going to manage that. So there's a lot of challenges in that and, and scary things. But what's exciting is that, like you said, you know, when you when you have someone as talented as Deepak and the way he has a following that and he's calming people, you know, I mean, he's he's bringing better things. He does that 21 day thing with um, Oprah. So to, to be able to continue that and it almost look exactly like him is pretty amazing, you know? Right. But, and I, I guess using artificial intelligence too, like Deepak's virtual being is reading all of Deepak's books and listening to all of Deepak's webinars. So he'll have the virtual being of Deepak will have all of that knowledge base within the virtual being. And we'll be able to just like have real conversations like the real Deepak can. I know it's almost like, you know, your digital twin and, and <laughs> if somebody's going to be, you know, reading all of your stuff and getting to know you as well as do you know you maybe even better, let's just say, cause they're, they're going to hear what other people say about you. So it's just really scary. That part of, um, <laughs> yeah, to be honest, that part really scares me. Um, I think it's awesome because, you know, we'll be, we'll have less stress cause I've, I feel sometimes in social media and digital marketing, we have so much to do and it's never a dull moment and it's always 24 seven. We have, you know, discussion the other day and it's never ending. And yeah, you can put tools in place to um, automate certain things, but how nice would it be to have a replica of yourself to help you finish your work? Right. Or I'm on vacation this week, vacation, quote unquote, but I can put like right. my digital version of myself on the front lines to like, you know, just do like the basics while I'm gone and at least somebody's there. Exactly. <laughs> Another Lisa Byer and, is there. Right. I mean, how amazing. And then, you know, what I love what Magic Leap did with their virtual beings, but I thought it was really creative where they're teach. it's a woman and they're teaching, I don't remember her name, but they're teaching her all the history of women. So instead of it being an assistant, it's, um, it's almost like a, a history teacher teaching you important facts of the past versus just getting your coffee or reminding you of an appointment. It's going to tell you about, well, that's a great point, but here's something to think about and maybe something really important from the past that has come up around that subject. So it's, it's a companion, but. Like, yeah. I also like one of the. Version. <laughs> I'll put in the show notes, the link to the Facebook group for virtual beings. But part of that group, I saw somebody posted about, you can ha actually have like a virtual girlfriend. They have a vir an app to have a virtual girlfriend, companion, friend that somebody <laughs> is like, just, you know, kind of in between relationships and just want some interaction, like just even just conversation, they can have this virtual girlfriend or or boyfriend, I guess, but yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a fun. lot of my friends ask about that side of things. Like, <laughs> you know, we can even get past like farther past that. Uh, first question is, can you do that in VR? <laughs> and I was like, um, I don't think that's the most important question to ask first, but yeah, there's a lot of real world things going on. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> That's funny. So I want to be mindful of your time, but um, what sources can you share that you that you love that people can continue to learn from? I mean, one of them for sure is your medium, um, your medium profile to follow you on medium because you're always posting, but also you, I, well, I, we'll talk about your channels before we end, but what are some sources that other than you that you follow that other people can learn from? You've already shared a lot. So if there's any we missed, great. Yeah, I mean, definitely Samantha Wolf. Kathy Hackle. Um, if you're a woman, Woman in VR Facebook group is a really great group to be a part of. There's a lot of, um, of women supporting women and even men too. Um, and there's the Virtual Beings Facebook group if you're interested in the artificial intelligence side of things. Um, augmented Reality, Tom, um, Tom Emmerich is he works with the eighth wall app, which is just another like whole augmented reality conversation we could have for marketing and branding. Um, Tony Parisi, who's head of, um, of, of unity, which is sort of like, I mean, I don't know if this is the right way to describe it, but it's the, it's how to program in VR. So I, maybe I would compare it to JavaScript, uh, MySQL, um, but for, 
um, virtual reality because it's much more powerful. Um, I would always follow the brands. So Nvidia, which is like the platform for the computer, like the graphics card, they always have really great insight. Unity, Face, well, Oculus, um, HTC Vive. Um, another one is uh, Joanna Popper from Hewlett Packard. She's also a really good um, source to watch. For um, what I suggest, though, is definitely the first time you get into it, I would look at the Oculus Quest Facebook groups or the HTC groups. Um, I have a group, Social VR Horizon, but just joining the group of what you're the most interested in. So if you're interested in marketing and PR, um, I, would, I would definitely look at Samantha Wolf's Facebook group. And if you're interested in creating and developing, I would look at Unity groups. Those are great um, and, tips. And even Unreal Engine. But definitely Twitter is live and in charge in, in VR. So if you're looking at education, Bobby Carlton, he's also a writer for VR Scout um, and Jesse Lubinsky. There's, there's a f so many people and there's a lot of different lists. So if you just searched it or if you look at mine, you can follow who I'm following on Twitter. Um, but definitely Twitter is the best place to get instant feedback news because, I mean, you know, there's so many creative people developing and really just pushing the boundaries. You know, there's a girl over being in Shazen. If you're into the, the, the gameplay of it and understanding like how to create avatars in games or also social VR, she would be the perfect person to jump in with. So there's just a lot of different avenues, you know, it just depends on what you're into. If you're into art, you would be into like Rosie Summers, Sam Luck art, um, so yeah, it's, it's really fun because there's a lot of different ways you can get your foot wet, but if it's marketing and you're just focusing 100% on marketing and PR, I would definitely follow like the Samanthas, the Cathy's of the world and um, Joanna Popper and Tony Parisi okay. and, and Tom Emmerich. So yeah. The oh, and then, a and then of course blogs, you know, um, for AR, it's AR Post Insider. Oculus has a blog. There's a lot of great writers on Medium, too. Okay, awesome. So, so the person writing the show notes is going to have a really fun time looking up all these names and finding the links, but you've shared so much amazing stuff. Awesome. So, Nava, where can we follow you on your social channels? Um, Twitter at Nava K, N-A-V-A-H-K. Um, I do have a Facebook page, My Social VR Life. Um, just because it was sort of in the beginnings. I didn't know where I was going to go with it. And I just wanted to test everything out. Um, and then I have a Facebook group, Social VR Horizon. If, you know, that's mainly on the social side of things, social media, social PR. So definitely come join that and join the conversation and ask questions because there's other people in there that love to, to share what they've learned for sure. Any conferences coming up? I know that we're in this, you know, conferences, live conferences are not really happening, but any any VR conferences or is F8 happening, um, you know, or anything with Facebook or that we should know about that maybe it's attending where we could. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of one-off webinars. Um, actually Facebook's doing like the summer of Facebook right now where you more on the social PR side, but um, for VR, AWE is an, uh, is a, an association that would definitely be useful and worthwhile to check out. So that's AWE. They already had their conference. Um, they did a really great job on the conference. I, I moderated a panel and I also was like a track chair. So they did it they almost, you know, like where you used to do track mm -hmm. at um, PubCon, mm -hmm. but they did it online. It was very creative. I love the way they did that. But there's always um, different VR webinars popping up, last minute stuff. But definitely if you follow AWE um, and VR AR Global Association, you'll be able to find a lot of, a lot of different great classes. Okay. And also Nava, from the brands. You have shared so much information with us, it's crazy. So I really appreciate it. And I think everybody listening to this, if you are um, interested in, in jumping in or ramping up or getting started, um, this is your go-to source this episode and check out the, um, the notes for all the links. If you think, feel like you were trying to like take notes during this and you weren't sure how to stop things, we'll, we'll put everything in the show notes. Nava, any last words of wisdom? 
that I think a lot, the only thing that I can say is that you could, you have, you can only start somewhere and it's taking the first step and just, it doesn't matter if you have zero followers or if you don't really know anybody, it just takes one person to me. And then that, that could be it for you. And investing in, in a headset is, is so important. It's like having a computer. It is the next computing platform. So why not be ahead of the curve and just start now? Why not? Yeah. What it tells I'm going to go buy my next headset right now so that I'm like up to date. So you, you <laughs> You're already up to date. Yeah. Yeah. You but, completely, um, you know, I kind of took a little bit of a break on AR, VR and AI for like a year because um, it just wasn't really getting started as quickly as I thought it was going to. But we spent so much time, like, I don't know what it was, like two or three years where we were, it was part of, you know, our life, our, our marketing life. But now with the pandemic, it's fast forward. So I'm so glad that, you know, you've helped me kind of get caught up. We're getting, if you're listening, you're getting caught up and you're realizing that the time is now. Actually, that was the Oculus campaign. The time is now. Oh. Oculus OC6. The t- I have a t-shirt that says the time is now. The time is now. Thank you, Nava. Mwah. Namaste. Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group, a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com slash free.